I'm Dave Ryan. I'm newly in place as the CEO of uh, Powerhouse Energy. Um, and unlike Nuno, I don't have any uh, profit to talk about. Uh, unlike Jeff, you know, there's no, there's no huge balance sheet value as yet. Uh, but we are working in an area where we see gold. Uh, uh, currently, the waste management choice is open to people uh, uh, in, in terms of end of product life uh, are to look at recycling. Now, we all know our own challenges with recycling. Um, uh, it, it, in the UK, it varies from, from uh, uh, local authority to local authority. Uh, various industries have, have different approaches to it. Uh, inevitably, it's uh, uh, a high cost a high capital investment business, either as, as machinery or as in people. And to date, it is presenting an incomplete solution. Uh, there are um, many millions of tons of uh, recyclable plastics and other products that are going overseas. Uh, other alternatives, we, we have our landfill. Now, in the UK, landfill is, is uh, being phased out, uh, yet in other parts of the world, uh, landfill is, uh, whether engineered landfill or just dumps, uh, is the norm for waste. Um, inevitably, it leaves environmental, uh, an environmental uh, footprint. Uh, there's uh, meth uh, CO2 and um, uh, issues with it, pollution, pollution and uh, degradation of the environment. Uh, in the UK, we're currently in a, a push to incineration. Um, I'm not suggesting uh, uh, to be against incineration. Incineration is now uh, very clean. The emissions meet uh, international standards, uh, and there's some fine technologies in there. Um, the downside of incineration is nobody wants it in, in their area. Uh, one can't get away from it. I've spent a number of years trying to uh, engineer uh, projects such as uh, 200,000, 300,000 tonnes per annum incinerator, and they are a devil to get through planning and, and uh, uh, permitting. What we are offering is distributed modular uh, generation of an energy project. So we take uh, wastes which are Currently, plastics and tyre, uh, in due course, they'll move into uh, uh, industrial solid refuse fuel. Uh, we may also move into uh, sewage waste and other, uh, and other uh, feedstocks where there is some value. Uh, we are not looking at huge uh, profile installations. Typically, our installations are half an acre to an acre. Um, uh, the costs vary from the capital costs vary from uh, about six million pounds up to, to fifteen million pounds for a fully developed site. You know, we are we are looking at multiple uh, applications of the technology, both in the UK and internationally. Um, most importantly, we are looking for a high efficient uh, high efficiency energy recovery on our systems. And this is my gold. My gold uh, is the 8 billion tonnes of plastic that have been produced to date, of which only 10% is recycled. Um, uh, every year, 300 million tonnes are, are, are produced. We can handle both all forms of plastic. Uh, we spent the last year testing uh, uh, plastics in our demonstrator in the University of Chester. Chester. Uh, we make various forms of, of clean gas from those plastics. We can also take tyre crumb and produce similar, similar high quality uh, gas, um, the, which, we can, uh, which is certified as an end of waste product. Um, and then that energy source can be used either for generation or potentially in uh, um, hydrogen, as hydrogen. So the world sees a waste we actually see uh, th these wastes as our feedstock. 
as our customers' uh, resource that they are going to make revenue from and in turn drive uh, the demand for the powerhouse technology. What is our technology? It is uh, a known phenomena, a series of known phenomena, um, chemical reactions that have been uh, in existence or known of for, for almost 200 years. Um, so we are not necessarily creating anything new there. We are just applying them in a, in a different manner. Um, there are a number of pyrolysis processes that are, are uh, in development and in commercial operation where the target product is an oil. The difference for ourselves is we are looking at a, a clean gas. So we are um, applying high temperature conditions to, to the plastic or the, or the tire crumb. It's easiest for non-technical people to imagine a plastic melting. So we, we um, feed in our feedstock at typically one or maybe two tons an hour into a, a, a chamber. The plastic is, is heated rapidly, it melts and then it gasifies. And this happens within, uh, in less than a second in our, within our, our chamber. That gas is then continues to be heated through the chamber. It resides in the chamber for about eight seconds, depending on our target, uh, our target syngas we're looking to create. We add an oxidizing agent, um, uh, typically that would be a steam, and we control the temperature through the chamber such that our gas uh, breaks, down all the breaks down carbon molecules, so the long chain carbon molecules are either broken down to uh, methane and CO or, I or further to, to hydrogen. We then take that hydrogen, uh, take that syngas, we clean it, um, I'd like to say there's no tars in it, but one can never be sure of no tars in a syngas. So we, we clean out those tars, those uh, uh, heavily uh, black bitumous type, type uh, uh, liquids you, you might be familiar with. We clean those out and then we're left with a, um, a high quality syngas that can be used either in conventional uh, gas engines, reciprocating gas engines, um, or we take a side stream and we will create hydrogen. Um, the hydrogen we're looking to create is 99.999% pure, uh, and it's typically the hydrogen that is used in fuel cell vehicles. So uh, our vision is to be engaging as a hydrogen producer in the, uh, the, new, the new hydrogen economy. So, our units are typically 25 to 40 tons, uh, standard design. Um, the, they are uh, what one might term modular. They're dropped off the back of a lorry in a series of skids um, and assembled uh, under a, a permit uh, that the local authorities uh, provide in the UK. Uh, we typically will take one, one truckload of waste in a day which would be, could be plastic, uh, various mixed plastics from recyclers. It could be uh, the plastic that a pet, uh, a, a pet bottle manufacturer feels he cannot use. So often bottles have uh, various plastics mixed into them. We take that plastic. It can be uh, automotive plastic uh, from recycled cars, uh, or indeed it could be uh, shredded tire crumb. Uh, that, that 25 tons, um, through the process creates about 37 tonnes of, of a, a high calorific uh, gas. That, that gas can be further separated to produce up to two tonnes, but we're currently marketing as one tonne of, of hydrogen. Uh, we will produce uh, a net 2.4 megawatts of power on a power-only site um, and lots of uh, heat for uh, our host or our, our customers' uh, local consumption. <coughs> so what do we offer our customers? Um, from uh, a pretty low ca capex investment, uh, the a readily available series of products, both in terms of um, 
uh, a gate fee for receiving the plastic. So typically, the gate fee could be uh, 80 pound a ton in the UK. In Japan, it's the equivalent of 300 pound a ton. Um, we have uh, power as a product. So uh, obviously, we, we're looking at customers who uh, either have a high power demand and want to be uh, reducing their power bill, or maybe those who, who um, are interested in uh, power purchase agreements uh, um, to, to reduce their, their overall uh, national demand. Um, heat is a, a product that uh, cl customers can use internally. Um, uh, we're seeking, the, we're seeking uh, CHP type applications where uh, the heat can be reused. The engineering group that we have uh, undertakes studies for people uh, integrating our design into their heating systems. Ultimately though, the vision of the company is to deliver hydrogen. Uh, uh, a hydrogen feedstock changes the, the revenue stream from being an attractive business, one that I'd be, uh, I'd be pleased to be running on an individual project basis, to one that is highly profitable. Uh, revenues from, from a, a, a 15 million pound uh, project would include all of those on an annual basis. So you'd have both power, uh, gate fees and the hydrogen revenue. And I have to touch slightly on, on hydrogen. Why are we in that market? It is a nascent market. Certainly in the UK, uh, the number of hydrogen filling stations one can count on one hand. Uh, the number of, uh, of hydrogen cars and vehicles is probably uh, 150. But uh, the opportunity offered by hydrogen vehicles, particularly in the, the buses and HGV market, to reduce CO2 emissions is significant. Uh, the, the market is driving uh, bus and, and HGV uh, manufacturers to engage with, with hydrogen. Japan, one of our target markets, has, um, uh, has Hon Honda, Toyota, and Mitsubishi pushing both cars and uh, HGVs uh, for local consumption. So we, we are currently in the UK. Our current projects are most likely going to be immediately in the UK, but we see ourselves as a global business. We see ourselves uh, positioning, uh, positioning uh, um, the business alongside partner organizations, um, which, so we're business to business, uh, selling units or, or licensing units to recyclers, to, to the equivalent of, of uh, local authority recyclers, to incinerators and, and in, as in replacement for landfill sites. What we do in turn, what the process does in turn for them is destruct the, their waste, remove the, remove uh, potential landfill sources, and give them a source of energy. How do we make shareholder value? Uh, this is my job. Uh, we are now at the point of of uh, taking the the process commercial, generating revenues. So our rollout is. Uh, to not rely on individuals like me just selling in internally into the UK. It is to get uh, partner businesses uh, as developers, as recyclers, as uh, construction companies to, to, to sell our unit and for us to, to, to maintain the design and license. So we take revenue through the consulting period as I talked about in, earlier with, with uh, CHP system and then revenue through the life cycle of the application of the process together with operational support um, as well as selling the units themselves. And who are we? Uh, the company has been in existence for, for about eight years. Um, as I say, I'm newly in position. Um, my background is in energy. I've got uh, 38 years building projects uh, and selling into uh, the, the capital goods businesses. Uh, I'm my chairman, Cameron Davis. Uh, he has an energy background, and he's led um, a similar business through to uh, a hundred million pound takeover. Um, uh, the 
the team then are augmented by uh, energy specialists, both in terms of the financial, uh, the financial modelling and, uh, uh, and the commercial deal structures we need to do. Being a small organisation, we have to lean on others. So we have, uh, uh, currently we've got a small engineering consultancy who's supporting us. That will move to a blue chip EPC company. We have UK project developers. We are engaging with similar project developers through Europe um, and internationally through the Middle East and, and uh, into Asia. And naturally, I've got services on protecting my IP through, through uh, permitting, uh, through, through uh, uh, patent, patents and IP lawyers. Where am I going to build them? We are, we are currently looking in the UK specifically because we know, we know uh, the, the environmental uh, demands in the UK. We know the planning and we, our manufacturers in the main for the first applications are in the UK. It makes sense to, to, to design and build to the UK. Um, that means a, a process of engaging with clients, reviewing projects, convincing some clients perhaps to engage with a new technology or parking them for later applications, um, and then going through the engineering processes with those, those customers. Ideally, I'd be, I'd be paid for the work we're doing, and typically in other, other arenas, uh, um, companies, technology companies like ours are, are paid. One has to recognize that we are, you know, we are early in, the, uh, um, in our life cycle, and currently, we have to give quite a bit away to secure a project. Um, my recent announcement was I am looking to uh, secure a uh, site together, most importantly, together with the contracts for power purchase and plastics, uh, uh, and plastics as a gate fee within the next quarter. From then, uh, we are already ready to go, already to go with our planning. So planning has been... Um, through one process for one site, but not submit, submitted. We're about to submit plans uh, for the first target site together with permitting. Um, what are the risks and rewards? The, we are a new technology. I cannot move away from the issue that sits in the, in the corner as a big elephant. We are a, we are a new technology company. What we've done over the last uh, year and a half since I've been with the organization is take that technology and look for existing manufacturers with similar experiences who could support us. So whilst my process overall is innovative and new, the actual components have been uh, used in similar applications on a worldwide basis for many years. Indeed, my principal vendor of my chamber has been in operation for 150 years. You know, so we are managing those technical risks to, to demonstrate to the external world that we're managing the risks. We recently completed an exercise with DNV where they've given us a tick of approval on our, our, our design. Then on top of those, I'm managing the commercial risk in terms of my IP. So that's protected by patents and then by the, the actual the process control is hidden within black boxes that nobody can get access to. Uh, nat naturally, we have environmental uh, and geopolitical risks, but those are currently secondary to my drive to get a, a, a site. What do, we, what do we present? So currently, we present a pre-revenue model. Uh, my goal is to build the first unit get that operating whilst in parallel uh, engaging with the worldwide community to develop uh, uh, agency franchise and license arrangements. Our role is to bring in EPC con contractors who will build the process for us and ultimately, perhaps not on the first, but on future units, will we'll undertake the EPC and give, provide a process wrap. Um, one needs to, to have a belief in the hydrogen market. If one sees the hydrogen market, the revenue streams that are offered, uh, both in terms of the number of units we could uh, roll out and the license fees and, and the revenues are, are, are mind-boggling. Uh, for now, uh, 
my rollout in the UK, if I'm targeting just a small percentage of the, the plastic going to landfill, uh, landfill, would mean at least 50 units in, 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 in a five-year period. Okay, done. Thank you. Do we have any questions in the room? We've got, we'll perhaps go to the one at the back. Right, or, no, no, please. Yeah, and then we'll go to you, sir. Thank you, an interesting presentation. How much has already been invested in the business? And you talked about, I think, up to 16 million to establish a site. What sort of return on investment, how many years before you see the daylight? Um, the, the amount, in, the, the amount invested in a business has been significant. Uh, there's been historically there've been um, various uh, large investors in the business. Our current uh, current balance sheet value, uh, share value, is is an eight million pound uh, uh, valuation. Uh, I believe we've had about somewhere in the region of twenty million, yeah, twenty above twenty million invested in the business to date. Um, you know, part of my the reason I I'm here uh, and joined the business back in uh, 2017 was to give them focus in terms of what they were doing te uh, with the technology and development of the technology. My own background is, I, uh, when I was running my own business, I also developed technology and took that through to, to, uh, uh, to market, so, and then advised uh, financial institutions on other technologies. So uh, the company came to me to provide them, to give them guidance on how we get to market. That's the one. The second one, um, Typically, our early, our early sites would be generation sites. They'll vary between whether we are, are on a host who has some utilities, in which case we're probably around about uh, five and a half million, uh, through to a greenfield site for generation, which is seven million. Um, the return on that is, uh, is about 15%. On the second and third units, as we go forward, as we drive down the, uh, the cost of the equipment, it, uh, the capex comes down from seven to probably about uh, six million, uh, and the returns then go up. On a hydrogen facility, uh, the which is a 15 million pounds, that return is is uh, north of 23%. Yeah. Um, my challenge at the moment is uh, there is not an immediate buyer of a ton of hydrogen uh, um, as a as a, a road transport fuel in the UK. Um, uh, Inevitably, we need, to, we need to step slowly, go through generation, prove the gas, and then move into the further investment in hydrogen. I think we had a question just here. Yes, I, uh, I can see in, from your presentation how you recycled the hydrogen, but I'm not very sure where the carbon actually went. Where the? Carbon went. Uh, the, carbon goes, uh, the carbon goes into the uh, power generation. So, the, so we do, uh, one cannot claim that we're uh, uh, com completely free of emissions. You know, we have CO2 emissions from our generation. Um, in the UK, or oh, in Europe, and it will be in UK, we are, we are limited in terms of uh, emissions um, against IED. So we need to, we need to make, uh, meet uh, the onerous conditions that uh, uh, a waste site would meet. So. There's, a, there's also a, an Australian company that are just starting up I think they're probably about the same stage as you, and they're basically using tyres as their feedstock. Yes. I take it you know who they are. So yeah. do you foresee them as a competitor to you? Um, to a certain extent, they are a competitor, but on the other hand, they're, they're also developing a market. Um, uh, being a single player in a market is not always healthy. Uh, I'd like to see other players beside us. And indeed, uh, the, the, sort of the technology arena that we're in there's generally a lot of uh, um, knowledge sharing to a point. So we all go to the University of Aston Research Centre, and we all sit there and we, we do that. Um, and even the Australians come over and, and use our, our knowledge centre. So um, we've chosen to focus, we've, we've tested extensively on, on tyres. In the UK, the tyre recycling market is pretty much under control. The, uh, one might say, the, 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 the local authorities who then report a huge tyre mountain say something different. The, the plastics going to landfill is certainly an issue. So that's what we're playing with at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, and another question just here. 
thanks for the presentation. Sounds, sounds very worthy. Sounds like just the sort of thing that the government should be supporting. So I guess my question is about, is about whether you, you have been or whether you are in receipt of any government grants. So for instance, whether um, some of the scientific grant giving bodies in the UK have maybe assessed the science behind your, your business or whether uh, somebody like the Department for Business has maybe assessed your, your, uh, your business model and, and uh, might be supporting you. We, we, are in, uh, we are engaging with uh, um, the political bodies and the government bodies. Um, Bayes, we, we've, we've tried of late to secure two grants from Bayes and came second. Um, I think grant applications and, and, and being <coughs> successful in grants is a whole, it's a whole business in itself. You know? So we've put some effort into, into the grants, but you know, you know, I, I, by the nature of them, they don't, they, they don't ease my, my, my cash situation because I still have to spend the cash before I bring it back. Um, I can call it back. So yes, we've applied and no, we haven't been successful. We are engaging with all the, um, with Bayes and uh, the Department of Environment. We sit somewhere in between we sit somewhere in between, you know, and um, we will be doing everything within our power to, to engage um, uh, government and uh, movers and shakers. Um, we are, we are a, a really a company uh, looking to find a base. So in that, um, you know, in that we see ourselves with, with maybe uh, 25 or 30 employees in, as we roll, roll forward, uh, uh, well, you know, highly qualified people do, doing uh, cl clever things in, in uh, a worthwhile business. One hopes that we will be supported by uh, local local communities, councils, whatever, whoever we're going to engage with. But today, I've, we've had nothing. Are there any other questions in the room? Just one at the back there. Hi there. Uh, thank you for your presentation so far. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, you've talked about in the next quarter uh, announcing potentially a deal. Um, what, what sort of cash uh, do you think you'll be cash positive at this point or are you still <coughs> going to be growing the business to be cash uh, positive? Uh, no, I won't be cash positive. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to generate some revenues fro from that, that deal. Um, the, 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 uh, before Christmas we, made a, we did a raise that it was uh, funding for pre-project. Um, once we get to the point of a deal, uh, uh, it's well recognised. You know, we are going, going to need uh, uh, further further investment. The important aspect, though, in terms of the message that, I'm, uh, uh, that uh, our business business model is looking at, is that we're not um, diluting shareholders completely to, to build the first unit. Others are going to to, to fund and build the, the first unit. Um, we will take revenues for. Um, mater the materials and the, and the engineering we're doing, um, I have to accept that in any engagement with a, a customer, because it's my first, there are first costs that will be uh, borne by the company. So those are what I'm carrying at currently. You know, um, my goal really will be to try and get to be uh, revenue positive by um, uh, the second quarter of next year. That's my goal. And another question at the back of the room there. Just one more question. H have you actually modelled uh, how much saving that your customers are going to achieve? I presume your local authorities will be amongst your prime customers. C could you actually indicate yeah. annually if, if a local authority switched your method of recycling, what the saving might be? In yes, we can. Uh, typically, the local authorities have... a. Uh, have a responsibility to handle their waste, but they're not actually doing it themselves. So typically they're getting service providers like the, uh, 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 the, the well-recognized intermediaries who are, who are doing that. On one of those typical sites um, where they're recycling and, and sorting plastics and inevitably getting uh, plastics that are going to uh, and, and uh, carbon-rich feedstocks that are going to landfill, um, if we, if we, our developers build a unit uh, on their site, um, so no cost to, to the host, um, we 
we save them of the order of three quarters of a million pounds in terms of what they're not spending going to landfill, uh, the, the power uh, savings they're making, um, together with the heat savings and a contribution to, to uh, the, the utilities and infrastructure that we provide. So it is a significant uh, uh, operational saving to people. The challenge I have is that within the business, I, the recycling business, there are obviously majors, and they have criteria to, 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 uh, before adopting new technology. And then there are uh, the myriad of other waste recyclers. Those waste recyclers are not necessarily new technology people. So you know, the challenge is to get into someone who does not, doesn't mind taking on new technology. And uh, actually, one of those target companies is, is is in Scotland, uh, only 20 miles from here. So, so you know, we are hopeful. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.